Hi, my name is Damodar Banotkar, Technical Marketing Engineer at Cisco Systems. Wi-Fi today is the most preferred mode of access for networking and runs almost all mission critical applications and devices. Downtime on a Wi-Fi network is not just about inconvenience, but actually cause future losses for your firm. This is where a good redundancy solution, which provides fault transparency and quick recovery, not just for network users, but also for the application makes a huge difference. Today we'll be comparing two different solutions, one from Cisco, the other from Aruba, and see how they stack up against each other. In a test setup, we have two Cisco 5508 controllers running the 7.3 code and supporting AP stateful switchover. They are configured in an active standby configuration. For Aruba, we have two Aruba 6000 controllers running the VRRP code for redundancy and which are configured in an active backup master configuration. In the first test, we have two clients which are streaming video inside the Citrix VDI application. The first client on the Cisco network, the others on the Aruba. Today we'll be seeing how both these clients and the applications react to an outage on the active controllers. Shiddaj over here will be helping with the timing for the Aruba controller. Now let's simulate the outage by switching off the power supply for both these active controllers. As you can see, the Cisco client is almost instantaneously back on a network. This is because the AP SSO guarantees zero network or zero WLAN outage from a client perspective. Voice clients might be the lifeline and the most critical applications that might be running on a network. These clients are overly sensitive to not just latencies, but also outages that might occur. Today we'll be looking at a couple of 7921 phones and see how these clients react and recover in case of an active controller going down. First we'll be looking at the client on the Cisco network and then going to the client that's connected to the Aruba. And then we'll be seeing how these clients perform on both of these vendors. Let's begin with the test. For Cisco, the active and the backup controller cache the PMK keys, drastically reducing the downtime. For Aruba, not only does the AP have to rejoin the controller, but the clients have to reassociate and re-authenticate with the radio server to get back onto the network. This leads to almost double the downtime as compared to Cisco. In this test case, we'll be studying the disruption caused on a video conferencing application such as Microsoft Link due to the outage on the active controllers. We have two clients over here, one on the Cisco, the other on the Aruba network, then an active Microsoft link call with a third client on the network. Let's shut off the active controllers for both these vendors and study the implications. As we can see, the Cisco client is already on the network. The Aruba client took almost twice the time Starting 7.3, the access point failover time for Cisco has been drastically reduced to just 300 milliseconds as compared to the 4 seconds seen on the Aruba virus LAN, and this translates into the consistent client recovery times that we see for Cisco. Also starting 7.3, you don't need any additional AP licenses on the redundant controller for Cisco systems, as the licenses from the active controller are copied over to the standby. But for Aruba wireless systems, you actually need to buy twice the licenses, one for the active and one for the redundant controller, increasing or doubling your cost. As we've seen today, the new redundancy solution provided by Cisco Wireless, which is based on the AP stateful switchover, provides less downtime and higher reliability as compared to the VRP-based solution from Aruba Networks. Cisco delivers on the promise of an always-on network by first of all providing a zero downtime SSID 
and then maintaining the states and the client keys between the active and the standby controller. Thank you for watching this video.